FDP in free fall? Is the FDP in danger of disintegrating? In the interview, Otto Fricke, FDP Parliamentary Party leader. Mr. Fricke, disaster has been averted. Your party's members voted to follow the FDP leadership and support the government's measures to save the euro. Is that a relief? Yes, it is a bit of a relief. It's been a difficult time, but that's democracy. If a certain number of people in a party want to discuss and vote on a policy, then that must be respected. Now we have a clear result, and we have to stick to it. But that does not mean that the FDP will just accept anything that happens in the European Stability Mechanism, or ESM. We will support only reasonable moves, and German taxpayers' money will only be used if the rest of Europe makes savings. This will have two consequences. The government can continue its course, and Philip Roesler can continue his course uncontested. Yes. Uncontested? Yes. There has been a lot of criticism of your party's leader recently, saying he was weak, too defensive, and that he wasn't willing to stand up and fight. Do you agree? No, I think people underestimate Philip Rösler. It's not his style to do that typically male thing of bursting on the scene saying, make way, I've got the answer. But now we have this result. He must show leadership, not to take the winner's stance and ignore the others. Our main task now is to show modern leadership, to bring people with differing views together within the family to listen to the grassroots concerns, to be inclusive, and to get people back on board. It's been a terrible year for the FDP. You lost a lot of regional elections, and your popularity in the polls has hit rock bottom. Is there any chance for a new beginning? The interesting thing is that the party that has given us the hardest time about that is the SPD. Not so much the Greens, who are our natural competitors, but the Social Democrats should consider where they were at the time of the elections two years ago, how many votes they got. They should compare that to where they are now. The important thing about politics is that you have to concentrate on the bread and butter issues. Secondly, it's important for the party leadership to be in agreement and not engaged in infighting. And finally, I'm a devout Protestant Christian, and that has always helped me trust in democracy and liberalism, as well as trusting in God. I've seen worse things happen in politics and in everyday life. Also, coming from the Rhine region, I'm a natural optimist. And that's all very well for you, but Philip Rösler is from a different part of Germany, so he might find it more difficult to remain optimistic. But what about your political program? The FDP has lost touch with its core policies. How are you going to convince people that it's a good idea to vote for you? First of all, our tax policies did help us garner votes in the elections. But afterward, they were held up to show what we'd failed to achieve in that area. We have to change the emphasis there. I think we made it clear that we realize that tax cuts are not on the cards in today's economic climate. But what's more important is that the whole of Europe is now looking at us and envying our economic indicators, our unemployment figures, our pension fund stability, our health system, etc. Basically, our functioning market economy. So we should never fail to point out that that could never have happened without the FDP, the party that has shaped the German model of the market economy. And we have to let people know what reforms we need to introduce and make it clear that although we're doing well compared to other countries, that's no reason to sit back and relax. Germany is doing well because of its market economy policies. And without those policies, we would be small and weak, especially in this globalized world. You're a budget man. Your core voters are not just concerned with tax cuts and simplifying the tax system in Germany. They also want to see the social welfare system dismantled to some extent to free up that money for other things.
things, such as education. Is it unrealistic to call for a budget without state borrowing for the year 2012? No, we do want to campaign for that. And as a budget man, I know exactly how I would achieve that if I were allowed to make policy on my own, which, thank goodness, I'm not, since this is a democracy. If you ask those who criticize the coalition for not saving enough, what we should cut, the answer is always raise taxes. But I say, look at the labor market figures under the last government and our expenditures now. People have forgotten that we cut back a lot of unnecessary programs without affecting people's ability to better themselves and gain qualifications. We have invested billions in education programs, more than ever before. I would like things to move a bit faster, but I'm not the sort to promise instant fixes. The budgetary reality dictates gradual cuts and keeping spending stable and below the rate of inflation. That's what we're doing. And we have to keep lowering new borrowing every year. It's like the euro question. There is no on-off switch. It's a journey, and you have to take people along with you and explain to them what's right. Right. Some think revenue is the answer. But those people do not realize that when you collect more, you just end up spending more. The euro crisis has been on German people's minds a lot this year. People are asking, what's going to happen to our money? Nothing's going to happen to our money. It's going to continue to be one of the constants that secure our livelihoods. But we are going to have to work hard to make sure that that remains so. People often forget what caused the crisis. It's easy to blame the bankers, the financial markets. But I say don't blame the lenders. Blame those who default on their debts. We have to stop these games. More and more borrowing, and in the end, in an emergency, Germany has to pick up the tab. Ten years ago, people thought it was impossible for a country or a city to go bankrupt. Now that's exactly what we're facing, and we've got a tough time ahead of us. Europe can now see that Germany is prepared to do its duty, but only if the sums add up. So we're on the right path, and the Chancellor is doing a good job. Although it's not always easy to get everyone on side, we're hopeful that certain Europeans from across the water will join us. It's been an extremely difficult week for the FDP. Your General Secretary resigned, and he was certainly one of the party's most talented politicians. Then the internal wranglings over the euro, although the result of the vote was eventually positive. Is the FDP in an existential crisis? No, it's not an existential crisis, but it is a crisis, no question about it. How serious it turns out to be is going to depend on how the members and politicians in regional parliaments and the regional party leaders can come together and start moving forward. An existential crisis always boils down to a lack of unity. When I ask people what they don't like about the FDP, the answer is not our liberal free market policies, but the fact that we're perceived as being at odds with each other. And that needs to stop. We need to decide on our position and then defend it together. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.